Okay, well, hello everyone. I am Ann DeVere, and this is a Grapevine hosted workshop. It's all about uh, sharing our stories from the heart. And uh, really happy to have you here. Please relax, feel free to interact. There's going to be a lot of interactions, and uh, we're going to be learning and crafting our story at the same time. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, just give you the overview of what's going to be happening. So uh, one of the things we're going to be talking about is how to submit your story to Grapevine, which will be later. But my focus is on how to get more um, get more comfortable and get be more dynamic when you're sharing your stories at meetings. The reason for that is at my very first meeting, I heard a story that I resonated with. I can share the story a little bit later as an example, but stories just, they, we love stories from when we were kids to, you know, fairy tales all the way up to now. The movies we watch, they're all stories. And the better they're told, the more engaged we are, the more impactful they are on our lives and, and who we are, really. So oh, the one of the things we're going to be sharing is uh, the core of it, the three dy dynamics, the three elements of dynamic stories. And uh, also we'll be talking about how to grab people's attention. So the what will be happening, I already told you, partial parts of this is going to be recorded and that we're doing that. Please feel free to turn off your camera anytime. Uh, the agenda. Basically, there are going to be three parts to this. The training and crafting your story part and the uh, laser coaching part. Once we craft a story, one of you can volunteer and we'll walk you through the laser coaching part. You know, how, how can you change a couple of words to make your story even more dynamic? This is your story. You already know it. And it's just putting in a little bit of a zing in it, and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. And then we're going to go into breakout rooms, you know, with two other people so you can share and give feedback to each other. Because a lot of times we're not really sure how we sound. We're not really sure how we're impacting people and the words that we're using. How are they landing? So it will be really helpful to get feedback from two other people. So I know it works beautifully every time. And to earn your attention, I will just quick something about me and I will actually go full screen with this. I am an international trainer, consultant, executive producer of access to experts and meet the press live and producers club and all that. But the secret ingredient was my late husband, Michael. He was a director of the six o'clock news and uh, uh, post-production. And oh, just he was just so involved in, in you know, TV and movies and uh, for many, many years. So the two of us got together many years ago to actually train experts to be interviewed on network TV, breaking news shows and talk shows and things like that. And if you can guess, it's all about how you deliver your content quickly. And in a way, the audience understands that was my job. So we would actually take people to Channel 6 in San Diego. We would rent the station on Sundays and interview our clients on the news desk with, a, with one of the reporters. And that's, you know, some of the experts we have actually taken there. So the reason I am sharing this is because... I want to earn your attention. The content that I'm about to share with you, it's actually simple. We're all doing it. It's just a tiny little tweak makes a big difference. And that's pretty much what we did with the experts we were training to get out there. And guess what? You're an expert at your story. You're an expert. You're here. And especially if you're here wanting to share for Grapevine, Oh my God, you are already excited. You already want to share your story because you know it's impactful. And that's what we're looking for. So my part here is just give you a couple of tips and have lots of fun together. And then we'll practice, okay? And so I, I hope all of you are pretty excited about doing this. I know I am. And I'm a little bit nervous too because I have to kind of make sure I, I 
take away some of the bells and whistles for the other experts on TV. But I'm like, did I do enough? So I'm looking for your feedback. I'm looking for your help because we want to make this the best it can be. So please jot down some notes and feel free. Let, let, let me know and, and connect with Bonnie. Any suggestions you have, we really, really want it because we're being asked to present at you know conventions and, and other district uh, events and things like that. So we want to impact as many people as we can because stories, our stories are super important, super, super important. So happy to have all of you here. And so what are we going to be doing? Well, I'm going to be starting with uh, I want to tell you what we are going to be covering, the three elements of dynamic stories, right? And you are, you've been watching this forever. You have been experiencing ever since you were a child. Every story, like every movie, every book, every play, they have pretty much the same format. The characters, who was there, the setting, where were we, what were we seeing or feeling, and the plot, like what happened. Now that one you actually already have been sharing all over the place. The plot is what, you know, the problem, you know, what was it like, what happened and what is it like now? So this part we have, and uh, I'm hoping some of the things that I share is going to give you a little bit more, um, yeah, that little secret ingredient, the secret sauce that's just gonna kind of spice up your story with describing who was there and the surroundings. A lot of times that's what we need to actually capture the audience attention and just take them on journey with us. And so the first thing we're gonna do, oh, what well, I forgot, I actually have uploaded, <laughs> I have uploaded the, the, let me see, I had the link right here, but now I don't see it for you to download the worksheet. Well, you know, oh, here it is. Okay, so I'm going to put, and, and Bonnie, please, and uh, copy, oops, copy and paste as needed as people come in into the Zoom. They will be, you know, they're not going to have access to it or, you know, so who knows. But here's the, here's the link to the, to the handout. It's basically, it just basically has a few of the things I'm talking about. You can follow along or you can use it later. Just take notes right now. It's up to you how you do it, but that's the link. You can go and download it right now. Okay, so having said that, the very first thing we're going to do, we're going right into the training now, basically, is uh, your building blocks, okay? Every story, you know, if you're sharing in a program, there is the before, what happened before AA, the introduction to AA, the first meeting, then there's the unity, service, and recovery. Now, ideally, we should be able to have all these components when we're sharing. Now, depending on the time that we have to share, sometimes we have only 10 minutes, sometimes we have 15, sometimes we have 45. So we'll be able to add components and take them out. And so if this sounds a little confusing, it's actually pretty simple. The way we craft our story is kind of modular. So today we're going to focus on the story that we always tell. It's our first meeting, okay? We're all going to be crafting that. But if, I, if I'm, if i let's say, sharing at a beginner's meeting, I will always have my first AA meeting and I will focus on the first three steps. I will focus on how in early recovery, my network is what carried me. We would go bowling together. We would go camping together. There's a meeting after the meeting. So all of these components are important. So depending on where I'm sharing, I will take certain parts. It's uh, if 
we focus, this is the part that's really, really important. To be able to customize the story for the right audience is really important. And again, the time that we have. So if we are, if we're, uh, let's say if I'm speaking at a big book meeting or if I'm uh, doing a step study, then of course I'm gonna focus more on the steps or maybe it's a it's a fifth step. Whatever it is, we dive deeper. And so if we have all these stories, basically each one of them about three minutes long, and I can show, I will show you how that works. Uh, only each each component about three minutes long. All of a sudden, if I only have ten minutes to share, I'm going to do what was it like before before AA in my first meeting, and then I will add maybe the first three steps if I am speaking at an H and I panel, for example. Right, that's ten minutes right there, and it's relevant to the group. An H and I panel, I always share only on the first three steps to give them hope, right? And so, uh, again, this is this is your toolkit. You get out there, you can customize what you share and how you share it. So I'm gonna, you know, go big screen again, please. If you want to take a screenshot, feel free. But uh, so again, the before AA story, not. I don't need to explain that. Introduction to AA, the first meeting. The, then we go into unity. And it could be whatever is important to you. Fellowship, the home group, meeting after the meeting, and just add whatever you need from the unity. Because our program works because of unity, service, and recovery, obviously. So then we go into service, where there's sponsorship, their commitments, and speaking opportunities. Then we talk about the program, recovery, the 12 steps, you know, each one of them or a combination. And there's emotional sobriety and their spiritual awakenings. So we should have stories on pretty much all of these, or at least know what we want to say about each one of them. Some of them can be really quick. Some of them, you know, maybe we need to dive in deeper. So just, it would be really good for you to have just a notebook and just jot down some thoughts as they come on in different categories. So that's your storybook, right? You know, so, it, and it really helps when you're being asked to speak somewhere, you're like, ooh, I just put that story in there. It's perfect one for this group so very very helpful now the next one is what you share be mindful of what you share um our stories are very powerful our stories can be pretty intense and i have heard some people share something at a mixed meeting that was really inappropriate and uh for the beginners and uh it, it was something that would be better shared within small groups or close friends or especially one-on-one. -on -one. You know, our one-on-one -on -one stories would be what we share with the sponsor as well as what we share with the sponsee or maybe somebody we're mentoring. So be very mindful because not everything is appropriate. Now, the other thing is also you want to protect yourself. You know, it's wonderful to be sharing, but there are some things because we don't know who we're sitting next to, right? And so people are taking cues from us what to share in a meeting. So for me, I think it's, you know, we need to think about that to protect ourselves as well as not make other people feel uncomfortable, okay? And um, so the next thing, it's about getting out of your head and getting into your heart. For our stories to be impactful, we need to remind ourselves before we even begin. Usually what I'll do, I just ask God to speak through me. And right away, it's my heart just cracks wide open. It's not about me. It doesn't make a difference how I sound, what I do, how I look. It doesn't really make a difference because at that moment, I'm there to serve. If I have done what, you know, if I already know what I want to share about different aspects of my life, when I show up at the meeting to share, or if I'm just raising my hand to share because somebody said something that moved me, maybe the speaker, you know, brought up something that I just really loved and it just, you know, brought up memories or how to break through. I want to share that. Um, at that point, it's not about me sounding good. It's about me sharing my emotions. And we'll tap a little bit more into that. Now, the easiest way to do this is 
when we're sitting in a meeting, it's, you know, I know I've done it myself. A lot of us do. It's like, oh, what am I going to say? When somebody's sharing, we get an idea. I mean, we're, we're playing it in our head. And all of that, we can actually let go, especially if we're leading a meeting. We, the more we are centered in our heart, the more captivated they are within our story. The more engaged they are within our story, the more they walk through the emotions, the more of an impact we're having. Uh, then the, the chances of them having a breakthrough or, or, or hearing just that thing that they need at that particular time is super important. I know without a shadow of a doubt that God speaks through us. And uh, it's happened several times. I will be thinking about something or praying about something, maybe talking with my sponsor or others, and I'll show up at the meeting and, and I'm hearing exactly what I need to hear. And so that's why whenever I show up, okay, God speak through me. Uh, maybe there's just one person that needs to hear whatever you want to say. But that's my way of getting out of my head and getting to your heart. Your way may be a little different. But I found, you know, just asking God to speak through me just does it all. It covers everything. And because I get out of my way and let God do, do the talking, right? You know, and what's better than that? What's easier? And so anyways, that just a, a little thing that works every time for me. And um, then the other thing you really want to keep in mind is be yourself. Knowing your authentic style is key to showing up and really connecting with people heart to heart. I have seen people share at meetings because the person before them uh, was funny, they were witty, and they were like, oh, I want to be like that. And they'll get up and share or share their story. Um, and they just, they're not getting, they're not getting the laughs that they were hoping for. Then they start getting into their head. They get nervous. Then you can see the energy just plummeting. But all they had to do was just be themselves. So we we have our style. So I'm going to go full screen with this. See which one of these resonates with you. Okay. The, the three main ones that I come across, there are many, many combinations, by the way. So just see which one really resonates with you. You know, and, and by the way, you would be a combination of all three, but which one is your primary? Because when you are in your authentic self, you're going to show up and you're not going to pretend to be somebody else and you're going to rock it. Okay. So the very first one is a funny style, you know. So as a person, you know, you are witty and playful. That's who you are. You just, you know, you're just happy go lucky in general, you know. Uh, and you love to make people laugh. And this is even when we're going through hard times, we love to laugh at some of the stuff that is not even funny to the average person, but we just laugh at ourselves. They're like, what was so funny about that? That was tragic. That was embarrassing, but we get it. So if you know how to laugh at yourself, you know, go for it. Okay. And you usually hear people say, oh, you are hilarious. Right. So if that's what people are saying, your primary style is Funny, okay? Now, there's the enthusiastic style. You're passionate and energetic. You love to motivate others. And people will say, oh, you're so inspiring. I really love that. I want to do that. And uh, guess which style I am? Okay, <laughs> one guess. And then there's the dramatic style. You are really expressive you really get into your moods and feelings and you're able to express it from a really like you know intense place in the, from a deep from your heart from your core and that's the dramatic style you can take people on a journey okay and so if you like to evoke evoke deep emotions in people then you're the dramatic style. And you'll a lot of times hear people say, oh, that was so touching. You really got me thinking about this. So you really got me doing, you can see that you're evoking emotions. Now, having said this, you will find that different aspects of your story will bring up these different parts. So show up, whatever is called for, but be okay with your authentic self. 
So if you're a dramatic style, be dramatic. Start your story with drama. And you're going to be crafting it in just a bit. So, um, you know, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, I would love to. I would love to know how many of us are actually funny, enthusiastic style. When you, you know, if you've identified, we're going to go through it in just a minute once we, you know, go back into into the group panel, right? Okay. So this is all the setup for us to get started. Okay. Now the other thing that is super, super, super important is as we are sharing our stories to name the emotion that we are experiencing within the story when you were a kid what were you feeling or here let me let me just go ahead and pull up the yeah let's go full screen here because we feel a lot of, but when we name the emotion, people identify with that emotion. So, you know, we're angry, we're afraid, we're worried, we're ashamed and nervous and guilty, lonely, happy and confident and sad or proud or shy or frustrated, embarrassed. I know that for me, and again, feel free to take screenshots of any of this. I know that for me, I, 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 I share all of those feelings, all of those emotions and actually naming them. Like when I say I was so sad, regardless of what my story is, what I may be sharing, when I say I was so sad, all of a sudden you're going to, you know what that feeling is. You feel sad. When I say, oh, I was afraid. You know, the same thing that I was afraid of may not be what you're afraid of, but you know that feeling. So it's really, really, really important to name our emotions as we're going through the story. So just be who you are. Go back in time and, you know, feel. Let yourself feel. All of this is going to be very helpful in crafting your story. It's going to make it super simple and super easy for you when you show up. You just, you just go back in time and be where you were, do what you were doing and describe it from a place in your heart because your heart remembers everything. Your head may get nervous and forget some things or just may rattle off some things. I know that for me, I am very aware, like I don't want to be bragging. I don't want to be talking too long when I'm sharing. There's still a part of me that is very, very mindful. As a matter of fact, you know, even just doing this, I have kept my, you know, professional life outside of the rooms because there's no need for me to share. So for me to even say, I'm going to do the training and, and share about, you know, what I do and what my late husband and I were doing together, I had to actually speak with my sponsor. I'm like, I feel like I'm bragging. Do I, am I supposed to? Because I've kept it, I kept my two parts separate for so long. So I had to make sure that I was comfortable. Okay, so check in with you. What are you comfortable sharing? If something is not feeling comfortable, why are you not comfortable? Maybe it's inappropriate. Maybe it's your ego. Maybe it's your fears. Maybe it's whatever it is that's going on internally. So when something comes up, just like think it through. A lot of times you already know the answer and you can just walk through it. If you don't have it, you're not sure about it, ask somebody who knows you. Okay, so I found these to be the hurdles, not only within the program, I found these hurdles to with the people that we've been training for many years, you know, it's getting up and being interviewed on TV is a big deal, you know, everybody gets that nervous thing going on, and it, it just, it makes it a little bit difficult, but again, the power of this is just be who you are, you know your story, share your story, and make sure you're sharing with purpose what do you want the outcome to be you know and all of it really is that i'm hoping one person or at least one person will benefit by what i'm sharing so god speak through me okay so now we're going to go into the three elements of dynamic stories my my sobriety date is February 14th, Valentine's Day, 1990. 
And usually when I say that, people are like, ooh, juicy story. No, <laughs> it's not a juicy story. It was an ordinary day. I was I was done with my bartending. I was sitting in an after hour. This happened to be an Irish pub a few blocks away from me where most of my customers from my bar where I was bartending were sitting there. And all of a sudden it's like 6 a.m. I'm up all night. And I'm like, what am I doing here? I am done. I am done. And as I was, I got up, picked up my coat. It was a cold February day, you know, in New York City. So I got up, I picked up my coat and I started walking home a few blocks. And I was like, oh my God, it's been only two weeks. It's been only two weeks. I was hopeless two weeks ago. And look at me now. I feel like I can actually walk away. I can put down that drink and walk away. In two short weeks, what happened? So I just went back into time. And oh, I remember picking up the phone, calling into group, asking when it was a meeting. I didn't know what to do. I didn't really know anybody who was in AA. I didn't know in my, the relationship I was in. He was like, you need to stop drinking or we're, or we, you know, this isn't going to work. So I, I was talking with the woman. She said, well, there are a few meetings. She gave me some names and where they were. And she said, all you have to do is not drink between now and then. Can you do that? Uh, I wasn't sure if I could. <laughs> I really wasn't. I said, I will try. And so she gave me, you know, the address and it happened to be at the McGraw Hill building at Rockefeller Center. Now, the reason I chose that is because I knew the subway line so well in the city because I had been drinking in New York City. I knew it inside out, every bar, every club, every, yeah, I knew how to get around. So anyways, as I am running through the lobby, I could hear my heels. I just click, click, click on the marble floors. I'm running to the elevator. I was late getting there. I walk into the room and there was a man sharing. There is a man sharing and he's crying. I was like, whoa. The first thing that got me was the silence in that room. Everybody was engaged in what he was doing. I just grabbed the first seat that I could find empty. I sat down. I was in shock. Well, first, there was a man crying. You don't cry in public. You put on your big girl camp panties and you pretend everything is good. No matter what's going on, you pretend everything is okay. And that feeling of not being able to share internally was killing me because I never thought I could be myself. Everything had to be covered up. A lot of shame, a lot of guilt. So to hear somebody share in public and cry, and a man at that, oh my God. I was blown away, but what really got me was during the coffee break, he was surrounded by everybody in that room. They were pouring love all over him. I wanted what he had. I wanted his pain because I didn't even know how to express my pain. But most of all, what I wanted was all the love he was getting, the courage he had to share what he was feeling. I don't even remember what he was sharing, but it didn't matter because I could feel his pain. I could feel that love in that room. That gave me hope. I wanted what he had. I wanted what was in that room. And I was willing to go to another meeting. So a few days later, while I was drinking in between, I went to another meeting and they were sharing about the steps. And I heard that, well, except for the first step, the rest of them are God. Every step has God in it. So the steps are all God. And I was like, oh my God, well, uh, I don't know God because the only time I talk to God is when I'm saying, oh God, please help me. I, I won't do it again. And then I do it again. So if the first step is the only one that I know to connect with God, and that doesn't count, then I can't do this. I felt devastated. 
I, oh my God, I was like, oh my God, this is the only thing that I have right now. I don't think I can do this because I don't know God. And as things would happen, I went to another meeting a couple of days later. And during that meeting, I heard each person sharing who God was to them. I heard things like good orderly direction. But I also heard a group of drunks. I was like, okay, I can go with that. I can go with that. I started to say maybe I could. And then I heard that each step leads to another so I would know what to do. And that took me from hopeless to hopeful. And I am very, very blessed and I'm very, very grateful that I have only one sobriety date, that I was so in a way broken that I was willing to do whatever for the first time in my life. I was smart enough to get stupid and do what I was told. For the first time in my life, I felt safe enough to do what I was told because I heard that, you know, just do whatever you're asked to do. If it doesn't help you, it will definitely not hurt you. And that's how I got introduced to AA. That's how my life changed. And that's how I have been able to stay and take advice and share with people and mentor people and sponsor people. So that, that's the beginning of my sobriety. So that's just an example of how I might share. And by the way, each time I share, there are different words that I use. Each time I share, there are different aspects of the story that I zero in and no two are exactly the same. But because I know my story, but because I get out of my head and get into my heart, because I could just get in that timeline of running, I could just see myself running in that lobby because I knew I was late for the meeting and just walking in that room and just seeing all that, I could literally see myself as if I'm watching a movie and just experiencing it, being there. And that's what it takes, regardless of how, how big or small the particular story is, what aspect of your story is, what aspect of your recovery or unity or service, anything, it, it, it's irre irrelevant really, because all of it is, get out of your head and get into your heart. Okay. And so um, with that, I actually, actually, I think I'm just going to go ahead and continue. And then once I finish giving the instructions, uh, uh, I hope all of you are actually taking notes as I go, because you're going to be crafting your story. You should already start crafting your story. Something should be, you know, kind of jumping out at you, different aspects of it. And so now let's get to it. And we're going to cover the three elements of your dynamic stories. And all of us today are going to be focusing on our first meeting. Okay, then the, the idea is for us to make it anywhere from three to six minutes, okay, depending on your story. And uh, uh, then by, we will be doing it again. But once you know the formula, you can actually apply the same formula to all the different aspects of your story. Like, you know, before AA, your childhood, what was it like and all that. So I'm going to walk you through again. Today is just about you. How did you do your introduction to AA? How did you get there? You know, you, it was a rehab, you learned something, whatever, whatever your introduction, your first meeting is, let's focus on that, because that is a cornerstone of all of our stories, okay? That's the beginning of our new life, okay? So with that, let's get to it, grab those pens, and uh, yeah, here we go. The Every book every story, every movie, they all have these three components, right? The characters, the who, the setting, where, and the plot. So now what we're going to do is I will go full screen over here. And the characters are so, so, so important. This is the who. You need to describe, this is, by the way, you, may, you take notes on the side about the people. Just jot down some notes, whatever memories you have, and you can use what's relevant. So describe the you know, 
those involved in your story so the listener can see them and feel like they know them. So that means you have to really describe them. Now, the first thing is you. You're the main character. So describe if relevant. What is relevant? And you can add a whole bunch of things. You know, how old were you? Is that important? How did you look? I was tired. I was a mess. I was whatever you were, you know, in that story. What were you wearing? A lot of times what we're wearing can bring up those images we want, you know? So I was in this shabby clothes or I was dressed to go out for the evening and I was looking super wonderful, you know? And then, you know, whatever happened throughout the night, right? And also the others, the others involved in the creation and the solution of the problem. Who are they and how are they related to you? How did they look or act? Describe if relevant. Well, within my story, I kind of shared which I was sitting in an Irish pub, you know, with my customers from the bar. So you already know what customers in a bar would look like at 6 a.m. if they had been out all night. So I didn't have to spend a lot of time sharing about that. It was, it gave you what you needed, the context, but it's not important in the story. And running through uh, the, the lobby. So that's like, oh, it's the McGraw-Hill building and Rockefeller Center. Okay, you already know what Rockefeller Center is, even if you've never been to New York, because we have all those things happening in New York, Rockefeller Center. So you have an idea. Uh, the part that I focused on really was the man who was sharing, who was crying, who was emotional, and the people that were in the room. Again, I didn't have to describe all the people in the room because you know exactly what the people in the room would like because it was a meeting. So instead, the important part for this particular story was that I was in shock. I was in awe. I couldn't believe it was even possible. So knowing what's relevant, what's important is the most important thing you have to do, whatever that story may be. Okay. So now that's the characters. And again, you may want every story that you're going to write to practice. You may want to just have like a side sheet of it and just like, well, who was there? Okay. Mom was there. Uncle Joe was there. My friend Lynn was there, whoever, right? You just write them down. And what did they look like? What, what is it? Just, just doing this exercise will turn you back time for you. And as you create your stories, because you're already in touch with them and with their, who they were, or maybe even their personalities, they were jolly or they were angry or whatever, you will refresh your memory as to who they are. So whenever you write a, an aspect of your story and these people are involved, you're going to get right back in there. You're going to remember them you're gonna be able to describe them. So doing this exercise once is gonna save you a lot of time and it's gonna make it easy for you just to go back in time and get in touch you know, with your emotions and take people on a journey. All right, so the other aspect is super, super, super important is the setting, okay? The setting is extremely important because we are taking people on a journey. Describe the surrounding environment so the listener can see and feel themselves in the scene. Describe if it's relevant, okay? Take what's, what works and leave the rest, if you will. Where were you? You were at home or you were at work or you were you know, in the park, you were uh, in the bar, right? And um, then you want to do the engaging of the senses, okay? So the sight, what could you see? If you were in a park, you could see trees. You could see people walking, or maybe you were in a bar, you saw people fighting. Maybe you were at home and you could hear your family members fighting or whatever, whatever is going on, just where were you and what could you see? 
the next thing is, oh, uh, I'm things are because I moved things around. My PowerPoint is a little bit messed up. Okay. Uh, what was the weather like, right? Okay. Was it hot? Was it cold? It happened to be a cold February day for me when I was going to my first meeting. Was it rainy? You know, so all of that, the weather, weather, weather does play a part, especially that what time of year is really, really important. All right. Um, okay. So sounds, sounds, what could you hear? If you're in a park, the birds, you know, you could see the trees and I know you could hear the birds, you know, you could feel people, you could hear people laughing at work because there was a party going on. Or if you were walking down the street, you could hear the traffic noises. Is, it, is any of this important? But when you describe what you could see and what you could hear, people are there with you because they un understand those sounds, they know those sounds, and they know those sights. And smells, smells are extremely important to trigger memories, right? Um, the good or bad, good and bad, like, you know, the smell of fresh bread, we all know what it looks like, the smell of a rose or rotten food everywhere, just saying that it's probably making your nose crank a little bit because we all know what rotten food smells like, right? And so these things are super, super important, okay? So before you write your story, you want to just jot down some of these things and the plot, the plot, this is where the what happens, okay? The problem, what was it like? What was the challenge, okay? Well, this, this is a story you've already been telling, so I'm not going to dive into it, you know, too much. But for me, you know, it was the challenge. I needed to stop drinking. I didn't know what to do. So I called into group and, you know, all that. And, of course, before all this, you know, if I, I would have been sharing about before AA, so you would have a pretty good idea of who I am. Again, all the sights and the sound and the smells, all that would be included. And then the solution. How did you find the solution? Describe the search and the moment you found the solution. Well, I, you know, told you I called into group. They told me where to go. I showed up in the room. And I was just amazed that, you know, the feelings were there. The love was there. I wanted what was there. It was amazing. You know, I wanted what was there. And so I, I had found the solution. The results. What is it like now? Describe your life, feelings, and emotions before and now. Okay. Again, please feel free to take screenshots, but there's also, all of this is in the handout, the link that's in the chat. Feel free to actually, you know, download and, and customize it, make it your own. This is a general guideline of how to craft your story. And once you get the parts where, okay, you know, my emotions are important. My natural style is important. The most important thing is for me to get out of my head and into my heart. All of this will fall into place because you're, oh, you're going to go back in time. You're going to remember, you're going to feel, and that's all you really need to do. Remember and share what were you feeling and doing and when you share your story you're going to take us on a journey with you and again the emotions naming the emotions is very very important because I was sick and tired of being sick and tired I was helpless I was hopeless I was angry I was sad I was ashamed I was you know all the things so just describe what it is and include it just sprinkle it throughout your story because emotions is what we connect with again I may not have the same story that you do but there are only so many emotions. And when you say angry, I know what it feels like. When you say ashamed, I know what it feels like. And so does everybody else in that room. And so with that, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this training segment. And we're going to um, stop the recording and hopefully get some really good questions and feedback from all of you. Thank you so much for, just, for listening. Thank you so much for being here because this is what I'm passionate about. You know, I love stories. I love hearing stories and 
that's how that's how I communicate. That's how I connect with people. As a matter of fact, I'll just share one more thing with you. In my early sobriety, I was traveling a lot for work. So I didn't have access to meetings because I would be in places like India and Sri Lanka and Pakistan and Bangladesh. There were no meetings that I could get to. So the stories in a big book were my meetings. And boy, did I need them. And what I really loved about them is that from start to finish, they would describe the emotions. I would go on a ride with them and they kept me sober. They kept me in hope. They kept me in my power. They kept me grounded in God. And they kept me. They kept me. And, you know, 34 years later, and I'm still excited about them. I still love reading them. And I love hearing people share in the meetings and some people are more dynamic than others when sharing and i want you to be the dynamic ones and i want to be able to support you to be the dynamic ones that's why we're doing this okay so thanks everybody again and thank you bonnie for for setting all this up and i'm so so grateful for great mind for giving me the opportunity to to connect what i'm most passionate about which is my program and my sobriety what what I do, what I'm really good at, if I do say so myself. And it's not pride. It's just God is doing his work through me. So I'm humble enough to accept it. So doing what I'm good at, with doing, combining it with what I'm most passionate about, it just makes my life very joyful. Okay, and so with that, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording.